have to have a national security platform based on peace through strength. And I think as everyone in this room would understand, we cannot fight an enemy unless we're willing to acknowledge who that enemy is. And that enemy has a name, and it's Sharia compliant Islam. And we cannot allow political correctness or multiculturalism or appeasement cripple our defenses at home or abroad. Because this is no longer just a threat on foreign soil. This is now also a threat from those who seek to destroy us from within. Now, I will tell you, the other day I saw a television piece on MSNBC. It was actually on Morning Joe. And it was about the students at Booker Elementary in Sarasota. And that was the school where President Bush was on September 11th. And in the aftermath of Osama bin Laden's death, there has been a lot of talk about 9-11. And some would suggest to you that the war on terror is over. I would tell you that this is a civilizational struggle that continues every single day that we need to be prepared, that we need to understand. But what's more important was watching as those students talked about how 9-11 shaped their worldview as young students and now as many of them are in high school and, and are near graduating. And it reminded me of the fact that so many of us as young Republicans, and I know for myself, that our worldview was shaped by events. You see, my parents were liberal public school teachers from Brooklyn, New York. And I'm Jewish. So it's not very often that you find a pro-life, pro-gun, pro-family Jewish Republican who can get up and be aggressive and be assertive on these issues. But it's because I came of age during that time of Ronald Reagan, when we believed in that American spirit, when we believed in that American exceptionalism, that America is safer when America is stronger. And I know each and every one of you has that same story about why you're a Republican, about what you believe in, about what makes you fight for these principles and values that we hold so dearly and that are so important to the future of our country. Because I can tell you this, we as a country are not too big to fail. We have seen civilizations come and we have seen civilizations go. America is only 230 plus years old right now. We're young as a nation. We can lose this. When Ronald Reagan said freedom is only one generation away from extinction, we don't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like to live in the United States when men were free. He recognized that we could lose this if we didn't hold on to the things that make this country special. America's greatness is based on the spirit of the individual, not the power of the state. And that's what we're fighting to restore. That's why this is so important. And I would ask you, where do we want to be as a country five years from now? How is history going to judge this era of time? How is history going to judge this, these leaders that are in office now? How is history going to judge your generation? What are you going to do to take action to put America back on the right path? That's why I'm running for the United States Senate. Because right now we have a choice. We recognize the problems that exist. And we have the better solutions to fix them. And we need the people in Washington, D.C. who have the courage to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done, even when it's not popular. That's what Eric alluded to before. I come from an area that's controlled by the Democrats. I represented a district in the state legislature that voted for John Kerry and Barack Obama. But I never compromised on my core beliefs. When Charlie Chris tried to take the Republican Party to the middle and more moderation and saying the best way to beat the Democrats is to join them. I said, no, Republicans don't need to be less partisan. We need to be more principled. And that's what we need today. People who are going to go on offense. People who are not going to let the Democrats define the narrative. 
people who are going to be aggressive in asserting what it is we believe in without compromising on our values. That's what I've done. That's what I intend to do in Washington, D.C., to fight to turn America around, but I need your help. Join us at adamhasner.com. Be a part of our movement on Facebook and Twitter. Help us get our message out. We need your help in order to go to Washington, in order to get America back in the right direction. Bill Nelson, many of you know him, many of you have seen from this area that he's been able to benefit from convincing people he's a moderate Democrat or a blue dog Democrat. But this is somebody who has supported the stimulus and bailouts and cap and trade and card check and Obamacare. We need your help to get that message out because until we take back control of the United States Senate, we're not going to be able to put America back on the right path. So it's great to be here tonight. I promise you that I will work tirelessly every single day to restore the promise of America for today and for future generations. Thank you all so much.